Good morning, everyone. This is such a great announcement. You know, as we still come out of COVID-19 and all the lessons learned from that, you know, there are difficult times. There are difficult times for us to readjust, reimagine what the workforce was like, readjust to, you know, just society in general and to school and everything else. And you need good partners. So one of the unique situations I was in, I was, you know, president and county executives of America on a national level, but working with Nate on the board of directors, uh, working throughout this country to say, hey, we need relief. Businesses were, were shut down, uh, uh, you know, governments were shut down to a degree, and to come out of that, and how do you come out of that? And, uh, you know, without great leadership of uh, President Biden, uh, Senator Schumer, Gillibrand, but especially our great Congressman Paul Tonko, uh, to really come up with this art of funding and how we can reimagine things going forward which gives us the opportunity for the announcement that we're here today for, and I know the congressman's gonna talk more about it. Uh, there's a lot of people on the stage. Uh, I'm gonna throw it on the new chairwoman, Joanne Cunningham, to introduce everybody on her side. Um, but it is a great partnership. And to stand here and talk about the 15 grants that we'll be awarding today, the $2.2 million to lending organizations to support new and expanded training opportunities that will support industries like healthcare, manufacturing. These are the things we've been talking about. And as we started the Olin County Alliance, and we want to like you know cut the red tape in government, uh, really expand companies here that, that have made Albany County their home, but bring new companies to Albany County uh, and show the quality of life and why you want to live here with your families, raise your families here, why you do, you don't have families, why you want to be here, and all the exciting things going on. Uh, you know, it's the opportunity, but as we're meeting with companies from, you know, the UK and uh, all over the world, you know, and, uh, you know, New Zealand, and we're sitting there talking to them, we're like, we're bringing these opportunities, right? And the one thing we noticed, they kept saying, do you have workers? Do you have workers? You? And of course, I'm saying that to them, yes, we do. We do. And I'm walking out of them going, man, I hope if we get this company here, we can find the workers, right? Uh, things change. People went to school. They don't, kids, these next generations, they're not, you know, into going to school for four years or two years. They're looking at starting their careers and looking at things differently. And then you have people that just, weren't successful. Not, not one model fits everything. And we need to like adapt and say, okay, get us the education center and that's great. But there's people that don't fit that standard. And we gotta you know, figure out how to give them a great quality of life, light at the end of the tunnel, to live wherever they wanna live, to buy whatever car they wanna be, have, and to provide for anyone that they want to. And one of the things that we have done time and time again just saying, how do you match these resources? And that's what this grant funding is going to do. It's going to help train people. It's going to give them an opportunity to say, as we bring wind power in and we need these jobs and these partnerships, is to train people uh, through, you know, for the wind, through Hudson Valley Community College, through BOCES, two great organizations that are gonna sit there and help match these people up saying, okay, look, we're, we're gonna get you trained and you're gonna get out of this training and you're gonna have an opportunity to make a good living. And that's what it's about. And, and I can say this, and I wanna say this, anyone that's out there that wants a job, we can find a job for you. You just come to us, and we'll make sure you have a job. No one should be without a job in this environment right now. The jobs that have been created through, through all this act and through other things going on, uh, under the president, Walt Tonko's leadership, and everyone else's, there's opportunities, all right? The sheriff's here. They, he's looking for police, corrections, 911. There's job opportunities and training that you can get that you don't have to be a college grad to get it. And that's what you're gonna see here today, which we're gonna talk about the, you know, the county being jobs, but uh, kind of get ahead of myself with the Hudson Valley Education Opportunity, creating a mobile electrical lab will prepare individuals for bright futures and like off uh, wind. BOCES, Capital Regions, the, the ACAP training program for healthcare workers. As we talk about healthcare workers and we look at how do we get people trained in healthcare. And, you know, the biggest argument's always been the nursing home. You know, people are like, you gotta get jobs, all the ones work there. This has been going on since the nursing home was over. You have to be a unique individual to want to work in a nursing home. It's not an easy job. 
it's really not, it's never been an easy job. And I go back when, you know, when I started in the legislature, and I go back before that, it's always been an issue retaining and hiring employees, and you're gonna see something we're gonna announce shortly in a month that, you know, uh, that's going to help employees be there, or training through both seats and things like this to get people lined up in the healthcare industry to make a great living is going to be a, a game changer. Uh, you know, and again, it can't be, it's not possible without partnerships. And I, I, I do want to, uh, I also want to thank Brian Williams and Sean Ward for their work uh, in, in reviewing all these applications. But most important, I want to thank the leadership, the team at the uh, Albany County Legislature, including Chair. Chairman Woman Cunningham, uh, Majority Leader uh, Feeney, and uh, Bill Clay, Controller Rizzo, and my staff have worked in a partnership to make these happen. But we couldn't make it happen without this great man here uh, in his leadership, not just here in our district for bringing the money back, uh, but down in D.C. And I, always, I, I joke with Paul, he probably thinks I'm kidding with him. I'm like, pray for every day, because right? I don't know how you do it there. I don't know how you deal with it, that the, the prawn is down there in, in all the nonsense that goes on in D.C. You were good, you navigate it, and you always bring back and help deliver for us. So, on that, I do want to bring up Congressman Paul Tonko and say thank you, Fred. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, County Executive McCoy. Thank you for your kind invitation to join with you today. But more importantly, thank you for your leadership in bringing Albany County to the uh, forefront of uh, workforce development and jobs. Uh, we appreciate that. Um, when this country faced, when the world faced, a once in a century public health crisis, it took a lot of leadership, it took a lot of envisioning of ways to respond. Uh, the economy around the world was crippled, and uh, it took leadership like that of President Biden. And the, uh, the House that uh, was under the Democratic majority at the time was impressed with the way we focused along with the U.S. Senate led by Senator Schumer, we focused on what essentials were required. And because of the work that was done, there were several dedicated pots of money. But the one that really, I thought, spoke forcefully to the economy was AARP, the American Rescue Plan. <coughs> Making certain that the AARP, the American Rescue Plan, would be there to respond to our healthcare crisis, encourage and provide for resources that would allow our small businesses to keep their doors open. And then effectively to reach to our partners in local and state government to have the resources so as to independently and peripherally determine how best to invest those dollars. I'm so proud of the efforts made here today to invest in workforce. Workforce is essential, human infrastructure. We've done bills like the Chips and Science Act, the Inflation Reduction Act, certainly the American Rescue Plan, and the bipartisan infrastructure bill. That was about building America, whether it's broadband, or, or roads and bridges, or our water systems, public water systems, lead pipe removal, all of that infrastructure was important, is important. Environmentally responding uh, to all of the challenges of a clean energy economy. So this infrastructure bill is critically important. But what I like about this component is that Albany County wisely has chosen to invest in human infrastructure. That workforce that will be required to respond to an innovation economy, a precision economy, a clean energy economy, that hones skills in the individual so that they can respond effectively uh, to the needs of the uh, business community and the public sector. And so I congratulate County Executive McCoy. Uh, I congratulate the Controller Sue Rizzo for the partnership that they have had here. Congratulate Chairman Cunningham and the Albany County legislators. All of the folks who were part of the selection committee that reviewed these applications that were made. And to the 15 award-winning applicants who um, now will go forth and uh, utilize these funds in a powerful way. The American Rescue Plan with its state and local government component dedicated $350 billion to uh, those communities, to the various entities of government. In New York, we realize nearly 11 billion and 60 million will be provided, has been provided to Albany County. What a wise use of these funds with the $2.2 million investment. It's about bringing about the responsiveness of this county, offering hope and opportunity to individuals with the training that will be required in jobs that are 
one of a kind, eclipsing from traditional workforces many times. You know, the county exec mentioned the offshore wind. We will have many union jobs, union jobs that will be part of that infrastructure effort, making certain that the foundations, the towers, the cells, the fins will all be manufactured here in our local region. It is an eclipsing from things of the past. So what was the result of all of this investment today? Of all the industrialized nations, of all the industrialized economies in the world, we have had the strongest comeback. Thanks to the leadership of President Biden and the two majorities, the Democratic majorities in the House and Senate, in the 117th session of Congress that provided for this roadmap to our comeback from the, the uh, impact of the public health crisis. So I'm proud to stand here today as one who voted for that bill. You would think something like that would be a vote of unanimity, but it was not. It was a very partisan outcome. And I said, you know, we need this, and we will look back and say, because of this investment, because of the local decision making, the local deliberation as to how best to use these monies to have their regional economy come back, uh, we are now successful. So thank you one and all. Proud to stand with all of you. Implementation of these programs is essential. And so we can pass the bills and debate and work hard to get the language right, get it signed by the president, but it requires ultimately implementation. So thank you for sound implementation. <laughs> Gilderland and Marilyn Baldwin from the city of Albany. Uh, under the leadership of uh, Joanne Cunningham and uh, Dennis Feeney and Bill Clay, you know, the partnership moving forward, it, it's very important in, in county government to work hand in hand. And, uh, you know, I always say this ego's got to be left at the door. If you want to do extraordinary stuff, you have to just be willing to say, okay, let's get it done. It's not about me, you. Uh, it's not the people we serve. And uh, I look forward to working with this legislative body in this next term to really continue to do extraordinary stuff like this and other announcements that we have coming out uh, in a great partnership, but uh, not possible without uh, the leadership of uh, our chairwoman, Joanne Cunningham, Bill her and her sister. Her sister and I are going to start a support group over Joanne, but that's, not a, that's a side note for the president who want to talk about it. But I do want to say, please turn on. Team 
um, and the legislature, of course, um, you know, all hands on deck. But that is also something that we should uh, never forget because we responded as a community to a dire need that we had and operationalized um, a massive public health um, response on the fly overnight. And that is an incredible feat. Um, the other leaders standing behind me, I do want to amplify and recognize uh, county legislators who then um, are taking some of uh, the action at the local level in this implementation of these ARPA grants. So now we have the federal action brought down to the county level with our um, executive leadership, and now the legislature does its work. So we dig in and roll up our sleeves, and we have folks uh, that Dan mentioned, uh, Dr. McLaughlin, um, a key healthcare leader in our community. We have uh, Matt Miller from my part of town, uh, the town of Bethlehem, Dustin Reedy uh, from the town of Gilderland, and of course, Ellen Rosano. And now we have the folks, the legislature, um, rolling up their sleeves to evaluate the grants. Uh, put in the time to say, you know what, here's a lot of applications, a lot of worthy organizations in Albany County. Who should we fund? How should we do this? And the fruits of that labor are what we're um, standing here today talking about. Um, another point to amplify, because it's so important, I think Dan, you called it, or, or Congressman, you called it human infrastructure. Human infrastructure, workforce development, is the mother's milk of economic development. We cannot have a strong economy in Albany County without the investments that you're seeing today. And what we're seeing are a couple million dollars going right into the community with an exciting um, array of organizations. And I'm excited to talk to many of you about your plans. But we're seeing it in healthcare. We're seeing it in mental health specifically. Um, technology and uh, digital uh, technology specifically um, and other kind of workforce and that is so important. So I am very proud of all of this work. Um, we have the A-team standing behind me and I'm so grateful to have folks, um, folks like I mentioned and also our controller Sue Rizzo who's a great partner in making sure that we are wisely protecting the, the dollars that are coming into Albany County, and we stand tall in that regard under Sue's leadership. And um, really, you know, this is, this is again, I'll, I'll end where I started. This is a tangible example of collaborative leadership in action, helping our residents of Albany County, and it's exciting, and I congratulate all of you who received these grants and look forward to seeing much, much more uh, come along. But thank you so much for the chance. So I, I want to bring up Nina Blend. She, she's the only Community Action Partnership Director, and she's going to talk about what her grant means to them, what they're going to be doing with it, and uh, the impact hopefully it's going to have on the communities of the community. Good morning. Good morning. As the Executive Director for Albany Community Action Partnership, and on behalf of our Board of Directors, our staff, and all of the families that we serve, I want to express my gratitude to Albany County for awarding our organization ARPA funding, which will work to uh, support our Workforce Reinvestment Initiative. This program is designed to support unemployed and underemployed Albany County residents by offering training and employment supports for high demand jobs in both healthcare and logistics. For many of our residents, we know that the pandemic exacerbated pre-existing uh, barriers to employment, such as limited access to education, training, and supportive services. So ACAP is committed to maximizing the impact of this funding as we are working to build a workforce of skilled and resilient individuals that are capable of driving economic growth in our communities, as well as breaking down the cycle of um, generational poverty that we see on a daily basis. So again, thank you to Albany County for helping partner with us to really uh, navigate through this difficult employment landscape. So thank you. Strong partner of ours, our OC's leader Joe here, uh, 
you know, you have to take the opportunity to walk through their uh, through their campus and colony and leave. It's So uh, the canvas and the impact it has, because again, not everyone learns the same way. And what OCS does is take a lot of that out, makes it work, gets people trained, gives them an opportunity to do something that they might have thought they didn't have the opportunity to do or the, the skill set to do, to join this team out there and to the teachers and to the administrators, to everyone that works in that building. Uh, you walk through there and you can feel it. You can feel it when you're walking through there. And uh, I look forward to continuing the partnership with the organization to give people the uh, opportunities uh, here in Albany County. Joe. Thank you, Connie. Thank you so much. I really, truly appreciate it. Um, I do want to recognize before we start our Director of Healthcare Programs is with us today, Paul Negri and her team from our adult healthcare training. They do the real work. I think it's kind of job done on the ground. Paula and her team are amazing. I just really, from the bottom of our hearts, thank you to the county executive, everybody that's involved in the alliance, everyone that has touched how this grant program flowed through the county. Uh, we're incredibly appreciative. And I was explaining before, this is real money that will go right to work immediately for all the county residents. We have 71 eligible students currently enrolled. We designed our grant as a last dollar grant. So these students already applied for Pell, they went through the Rio money, they worked with the Workforce Development Board, Brian Williams and his team, to get as much support and funding and tuition that they possibly can. But that doesn't always cover everything. So this takes, this is the last mile, last dollar, take the last impediment out of participating in training that will get you a job. We have 100% placement. When you complete our program and any of our healthcare programs, you will get a job. And again, thank you to the county for your strong partnership at Shaker Place. Um, we do a ton of clinical um, rounds there. You hire our students who graduate, and I think that's a really an important story in all of this, that the county is investing into the training for the folks that live here that in turn stay here and work in county facilities and, and local businesses. We have 100% placement rate to Albany Medical Center with the folks out of our school processing program. So this is, again, real dollars that stay right here supporting the folks that live and work here to continue their education, to get a great job, um, and stay in our region and just contribute to, to, a, to the great way of life that we all have here. So just thank you so much. We're very excited. Well, Paula, we, everybody's ready to get to work, but we certainly can't wait to, 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 uh, to, to share this news with the students that are enrolled and tell them that, you know, with the support of the county, stepping up we can take away that last barrier that, that candidly goes on a credit card when you need that last three thousand dollars for a uniform um for 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 supplies right for all the all those little things that don't get covered albany county has taken away that barrier from those folks who participate in that program so this this is very meaningful and real work that that is in motion right now as uh, as students are enrolled we move forward so thank you to everybody who's been part of this and work with the county And that's what it's all about at the end of the day. So again, I do want to thank our controller, our legislators, all of our partners in creating this uh, to make it possible. But the meaningful impact this is going to have us on this life going forward. And you, know, you bring up a good point about that. I have to put it on your credit card. I think our, our great controller, Todd Denavi, came out with a report that most citizens in the state of New York are about $34,000 in debt on uh, credit cards. So this gives an opportunity to not do that to set them up for success, and that's what we want to do. So again, if anyone wants to work out there, we will find you the job that we you'll fit, that you'll like, and we'll move forward. But again, thank you to Joanne and uh, Bill Clay, and to Dennis Feeney, and to everyone in the legislature, and to my staff. I do want to thank Dave Riley and Luke. Thank you for everything. Kevin from the Public County Alliance. And especially Mike McLaughlin, our new deputy. We're trying a new program. Uh, he's going to work remote, stay home permanently, and uh, we're just going to communicate via Zoom. So it's really working out. It's been a nice week, so I do want to thank you. And Jeff Jameson, my counsel, thank you, Jeff, and to Mary and everyone else. Uh, I 